All right, in this video, we're going to see how to convert and how to do it and really demonstrate uh, the work and how it plays out. So in this situation, I'm asked to convert 20. This is U.S. dollars into Canadian dollars. So we're converting money. And anytime you do a conversion, whether it's money or length or weight or anything, you need a conversion. So if we look up the conversion, this can change this one. But let's say one U.S. dollar is equal to $1.30 Canadian. So that's our conversion. We always start this by writing down what we're trying to convert. So we're going to write down 20 U.S. dollars. That's our starting point. We have not touched this yet. This is sort of just, if we go to the bank, this is what's written on the wall. What I'm actually converting is what I'm bringing to the bank. So this is going to stay put for a minute. So to convert, we're going to set up what's called a fence post, or it's basically multiplying by a fraction. So we will just basically look at this, and U.S. dollars is a unit we no longer want. We want to cancel it. So we're going to take this exchange rate, and one of these is going to go on the top of the fence, and the other is going to go on the bottom. And the way you figure out which is if you're in U.S. dollars, you want to cancel U.S. dollars. So we'll put the one U.S. dollar down below, and that means we're going to put the 1.30 Canadian up above. And so if we multiply this out, this is the same as writing it like this. This is actually the more proper way to do this. And we're basically just multiplying by a fraction. And when you multiply by a fraction, if a unit is divided by the same unit, they will cancel. So U.S. dollars will cancel, leaving me with just the Canadian dollar unit, which is what I want. And then what I do is I multiply 20 by 1.3 divided by 1. Dividing by 1 is not any different um, you know, that doesn't really change anything. So all I'm going to do is take 20 times 1.3. And when I do that, I'm going to get oops, $26. So that means that 20 US dollars is equal to 26 Canadian dollars. And this is how I demonstrate it. And so whenever we do a fence post, whatever is in this upper and below thing, these have to be equivalent. They have to be equal to each other from the exchange rate. Because basically what we're doing when we do a fence post is you're basically multiplying by one. Because if the numerator and the denominator are equal, then this fraction is one, which means that this has not changed value. When you multiply something by one, it doesn't change its value. These, have, these are equivalent. 20 US dollars is equal to 26 Canadian dollars. But let's try another one of these. So here, I'm asked to convert 170 pounds in the kilograms, so I'm just going to start by writing 170 pounds down. I'm going to set up my sort of fence post. I want to cancel pounds. So I look up here, and I say, okay, one kilogram is equal to 2.2 .2 pounds, so I need to put pounds on the bottom. I put the 2.2 .2 pounds, because that's what, that's what it goes with, and I'll put the one kilogram on top. So in this case, pounds will cancel. To figure out the answer, you're going to take 170 times 1, which is just 170, divided by 2.2. .2. And when I do that, I get 77 point, I'm going to round this, 0.3 kilograms. So it also helps to make sure this makes sense. If you're going from pounds to kilograms, the number should be getting smaller. It's going from 2.2 .2 to 1. Likewise, if you go from 170 pounds to kilograms, the number should be getting smaller. And in fact, it does. So that's another way to check your work. But the big thing is whatever unit is up here, you need the equivalent unit down here. And that whatever is written vertically in your fence post, this needs to be equal to this. It has to come from your exchange rate. So you can't do a conversion without an exchange rate. And you're just turning that exchange rate into this fence post. Now, if I were doing the opposite, if I said, let's say I had 50 kilograms and I was converting that to pounds... Then I'd say, oh, I'm in kilograms here. I need to put one kilogram on the bottom and 2.2 .2 pounds on the top, in which case I do 50 times 2.2 .2 divided by 1. When I do that, I believe I get 110 pounds. So again, how you, what you do with this, whether you put the pounds on the top or the bottom, all depends on what you are canceling. So again, whatever you're canceling, if it's kilograms, kilograms on the bottom. If it's pounds, pounds on the bottom. But that's how you do uh, dimensional analysis, actually technically known as, or fence posting. Um, just need to use some practice. But it's really important because it's great to show your work. Um, if you make a mistake with it, it's easier to catch as long as you're writing the units. Um, but this is sort of how we do a lot of physics and chemistry type problems. This is a skill that's going to come in handy later on. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.